broadcasting on the BBC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the BBC. Hello, Welcome Home listeners. Thank you for joining us on episode 32 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm here with Trevor and Damon. How's it going, guys? Not always. I won't be here next time. Uh, and and yeah. sometimes, Damon. Mo- was, mostly I'm going to be in Disney, though. <laughs> I'm going to be in Disney, so like that, that's like a pass. Like That's just a generic pass. You, you know yeah. what? You, you do it's get a, a pass for that, just like Trevor did the last time he was in Disney, too. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Or at least he was in recovery from Disney, let's say. Yeah. That's a, that, again, it's the same thing as the button. Like, are you really not able to come, Trevor? Well, come on. Okay. Man. Travel days count. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't going to call you from the plane. <laughs> <laughs> travel true. days that do count, true. especially when you travel as far as Trevor has when to. you're so, that far away that is yeah. true yeah that's true so um so this week we're gonna start off uh we uh, for some reason I don't know why but the past like couple weeks here we have gotten like a ton of listener email which is great we love hearing from you guys and we really appreciate it when you email into us and ask us questions and uh and Mike B uh he wrote into us and and wrote us uh, and asked a lot of questions so stick with me as I read his email here because it is a long one. And thanks, Mike, for writing in and being very uh, thorough with uh, what you were talking about. So he says, I love the show and I'm planning on buying into DVC within a year. It's been interesting to hear how actual members experience Disney with their membership. I was wondering if you could discuss how you all use your points specifically. Uh, I know it's been mentioned in small segments of the show, but it would be helpful to go in depth. Questions like how many points each of you have, the kinds of trips that you plan. I know everyone uses their points differently, but it'd be nice to see the different options and the reality of using points. Uh, so weekdays versus uh, weekends, booking availability at seven months and at different times of the year. Uh, he's trying to figure out, uh, well, I guess I'm trying to figure out in his voice here, <laughs> how many points I want to buy and hearing uh, how you all use the points might give me another perspective. Um, I'm looking at 100 to 250 points depending on my options. I'd like the choice of having two weeks a year or do a large family trip every two to three years. I'm conflicted about buying where I want to stay, uh, Polly or Bay Lake versus buying the most economical contract, which is you know usually Sar- Saratoga he mentions here. I do want to explore the other non-home resorts and it's specifically like Boardwalk, but the high end, uh, high end date, I'm sorry, but the end date makes it not the best buy-in for me. Since I'm looking at buying resale, I wonder if buying the 75-point minimum from Disney down the road is worth the membership extras. The only thing so far that I feel I would use is the Epcot member lounge, which looks amazing from what I've seen. I've been considering maybe doing two separate contracts to get home advantage at different places, maybe AKL or SSR as a larger contract and a smaller one at Poly or BLT or equal for each. I'm renting points on my next trip to scope out what it's like to be an owner. I'm doing a split stay at AKL, AKL uh, which is Animal Kingdom Lodge, and uh, Boardwalk Villas. Uh, since I want to try all the resorts in time, I wonder if I should bend on location to get a better deal since after seven months, all points are equal, but uh, availability varies. So there's a lot to unpack wow, there. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of wow. answers okay. and a lot of opinions. <laughs> a lot, yes. a lot of all answers right. and a lot of opinions on what we just said. So yeah. maybe we should start the first place there. So, you know, as far as how many points each of us have, I have 100 points is what I bought. Um, the reason I have 100 points is because it is just my wife and I, and I, I have an infant, so we stay at studios. And, you know, we go every year, but we can make 100 points work for uh, for when we go. Um, and we do usually go, like, Sunday to Sunday is when we typically go. All right, so you're answering A and B. Okay, I got it. <laughs> oh, yeah, and how many points would you buy for, for two weeks, uh, a large family trip every couple of years? Yeah, I mean, it kind of all depends, right? Depends on how big of a room you need, because like for me, I go every year, but going for two weeks at a time, or you know, or two, or two weeks a year. I mean, you're going to need more than 100 points, probably like 200 at least. I would say. Well, yeah. it depends how many you're talking about in the family, right? That's that's the the big thing. I, I think you can break it down by person. So I have 170 points. Um, we have five, but. You know, the, the thing that's interesting is, is that you can do the singles with five, right? No matter what, even as they get older, you can still do them. You just have to ask for a cot, right? Like, I mean, it's not the end of the world depending on how your kids get along, right? So for 170 <laughs> points, we still do the single. Um, I've never done a double, and uh, I've never had a problem with going every year. I, I go every year for a week. This year we're going from... Sunday to Monday? No, Monday. I'm going from Monday to Monday. 
So I am encompassing a weekend. It, it's tough to not not encompass at least a Saturday or Sunday. Oh, now yeah. I was supposed to go again in August, which th- at that point I would not have. I would have done a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, rather than because it was a little bit of a shorter trip. So if you're doing a shorter trip, yeah, I mean, you too, if you can avoid the weekends, great. Like if you have the time off of work, by all means, avoid the weekends. I would say the only cool thing is is that Sunday is usually a transition day for a lot of people so it's a good day to be at the parks yes that's just my thought yes that's true and And also friday and saturday nights are the highest points right so sunday nights are weekday points and friday and saturday night are weekend points so that's to keep in mind too all right trevor you get a and b now all right don't 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 try to sneak ahead on us okay sorry 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 all right so first of all i have 100 points as well um my situation is similar to Tom's in that we stay in the studios. So, so I guess we should also qualify, you know, studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, right? That That's kind of how things go up. Studio being the smallest and usually the cheapest one. Although you're right. And the Damon, tree houses. Don't forget yeah, the tree houses. Yeah, tree houses <laughs> and all the, all the crazy ones. But yeah. Um, but yeah, the studio can sleep up to five, but it's it's really like just almost a step up from a regular hotel room. Like you still have the, the, uh, the kitchenette. And the extra the studio is tough with five, though. I don't it know is. if I could do it. I'll it's be honest tight. with you. I, I don't think I could do it. I can do the one bedroom with five. And, and that's not bad, right? Because some of the one bedrooms are four. But like I said, you can always get a fifth person in there. But a studio would be tough, man. And, and that, that's what I was going to say is that it, it this really does depend on on how your family works together. And if they're OK with, you know, being in a small room like that, uh, like to your point, Damon. Yeah. I know when I was when I was really young, we would do stuff like that where you know, like yeah. all the kids would be in the same room and it was fine. But as we got older in my family, because I came from a family of five, um, it it changed, and we had to we had a couple of rooms where but, or a couple of trips where we had two rooms because people needed their space. But so. even the one bedroom, I mean, the kids are still in the same spot together, right? Like right. you just have the separation of the bedroom, but we've done some weird stuff. I have a picture. I don't know if I told you guys of my daughter sleeping in the closet. Oh yeah. Right. We've seen so, that yeah. picture. Yeah. yeah. So she <laughs> yeah, could sleep so. in the closet at, at boardwalk. Now listen, this is all, you know, not, the way it should work but like there's some cool <laughs> options that you can finagle like if you want to save points it just like trevor's saying it just depends on how do you, you feel ever use the, do you ever cook in the kitchen in the one bedroom salmon just out of curiosity i dude i'm gonna save that for later because that's part <laughs> oh, of my okay. trip that'll be okay. part right. of my trip right. discussion so all right uh, yeah okay so so yeah for so and for myself also when we travel we only go once a year and we go saturday to saturday kind of kind of to your point damon is that we arrive on the saturday and we usually um, or well, we, you know, yeah, we arrive the Saturday and then we can go in on the Sunday and everybody's, you know, leaving and, and all that kind of stuff. And then it also usually works out that, you know, by the Friday or Saturday that, that next week, we're kind of done. And so we're, we're avoiding, you know, the crazy crowds on the Friday and Saturday night and, and Saturday is usually our travel day back, although we don't get back until Sunday morning effectively because yeah, it's a five hour flight. So well, and um, I guess for us too, it's a little bit different because I, you know, because we drive, right? So Damon <laughs> drives too. So I usually, the way we do it, because, uh, you know, my wife doesn't love being in the car for eight hours straight. Um, we usually will drive about six hours. We get to, or um, about six and a half hours to Daytona Beach the day before, stay overnight, get lots of sleep. And then wake up bright and early and get to the and so we have a full that's, park day the first day. That's just soft, Tom. It's, that's like not riding. <laughs> no, that's like that's just like not riding Space it's, Mountain. That's it's, soft. It's having man. energy Eight for hours. that first day and getting a full but, first day. You know, the but, full okay. first day of looking at Space but, Mountain. But here's the thing, though. Like, so if you're driving, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is never get <laughs> never get off the of Space Mountain. Then. <laughs> never. But but here's the interesting thing, though. So you could do the same thing by just showing up and going to bed early. No, you're not wrong. I mean, of course I, I could. Th- I think that I think the, the the benefit that you're stating is you're saving points. Yeah. For, so exactly. forget about anything exactly. else. Exactly. I'll give you the saving points benefit, but I can't give you anything else. The saving points benefit I get because you're paying for a hotel room, which is by no way going to be worth as much as a Disney hotel room Absolutely. that first night. Yeah, I, I get a hundred buck hotel room in in Daytona. For a hundred, you know, and otherwise I'd be spending points on it, and it would but, kill me. Let me ask it, you it would kill me though. to show up there at like eight o'clock at night when I could have been there at like four. Yeah, you know? not use it. Yeah, but, but, but use here's it. the exactly. thing, though. So the next day, you check in at what time? Like, what time do you try to get like there? Like bright and early. We we probably usually so you we'll, can't rope drop that day. 
Oh, we do rope drop. We we have. In fact, the trip we did last year, we actually we were staying at Boardwalk, and we got we we went we uh, rope drops frozen from the International Gateway. Like we we were there at maybe Wait, eight. Why did you go to the International Gateway? Because we were th- we went through the back end of uh, of Boardwalk. Through. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we you know you can walk into Epcot from Boardwalk. So. Um, so we basically, it was our first day there. We were there like eight 30. I think the park opened at nine that day. And we were like, why don't we go rope drop frozen? We're here. So, and mm. we, I think we had fast passes scheduled for Epcot that day. So we, uh, yeah, we just, we just did that. We get there early enough cause it's, it's one of those things where we wake up and we're like, you know, excited to go. And then we just get on the road. There's no traffic at, you know, six yeah, so o'clock in the morning. How far away is Daytona? So about an hour and a half. So you're still getting up at six o'clock in the morning. Does Pretty that much, make yeah. you tired? Not really. I mean, cause I got a good night's sleep the night before. You know, mm. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So, so all this tells me is that anyway, sorry. <laughs> a lot of these answers are very situational to, oh, to yeah. everybody. So, so again, you know, take what we're well, saying. Well, I, I think salt. the thing is too, like, so if you haven't listened to to all the episodes, right? Trevor has a son. One son. How old's your son again, Trevor? He's ten. So, okay. yeah. Tom has an infant, yep. and I have three kids that are a girl that's eight a boy that's 12 and another boy that's 14, right? So all of that's going to come into play about, you know, what you want to do. The the one thing I want to mention here about points for myself is, is I wish I had done DVC earlier and then ended up with more points. I'm going to buy a resale contract at some point. I just don't know when. So I'm just going to segue into his C and D, right? Or yeah. Should you buy where you want to stay or go with the most economical choice? And should you buy 75 points direct? All right. So my personal opinion, I like having that card. That card is worth a few thousand dollars to me, you know, buying yep. direct. That's how I feel about that card personally, right? Um, now, whether do I buy where I want to stay or to go with the most economical choice? I, I think it's an economical choice. Again, luck of the draw for me. I've never had a problem staying wherever the heck I want to stay because I don't stay at Christmas, at Easter. So... Again, this is how I would answer that question. If you're going to stay holidays, go where you want to stay the most. I mean, that makes the most sense, I think, because, you know, that's where you're going to stay if you're going for holidays. You're going (laughs) to be staying at 11 months out. You know, if not, then go economical. For me, I go in June. I go in August. I've been in October over Halloween, but that still wasn't even that bad. Honestly, Halloween is like a fringe holiday, honestly. I mean, it's packed. Trust me. It's packed. <laughs> yeah, but, but like, yeah. it's a little different because, one, it's an American holiday, right? Sure. So anyway, so those are the, th- excuse me, the three times that I go. I find it to be most economical choice. That's what I would do. Those I, are my opinions. I think if I had to do it over again, like if I, if I you know, if, if I was buying today for the first time, I probably would go the route of buying the 75 direct points so I could get the get the blue card and get the benefits and then buy a resale contract to supplement that. That would probably be the most economical way to do it if you really want so, those benefits. Yeah, and so those benefits are, again, the, the lounge and what else, right? So The discounts. Um, is well, Moonlight the, Magic part of that as well, or is that available yes, to everyone? Yeah, that is part of it too. Uh, now, the one thing that isn't part of it that like you just need the the uh, the you can have a resale contract for is Top of the World. So you can actually get into Top of the World without having. Oh, I forget. Card. I have to do that this time. Oh, that's yeah, late, you got later, later segment. Yeah, yeah later for segment. Sure. So, uh, but but go ahead, Trevor. I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say so. So yeah, I guess all these things that we're talking about are they're incidental things, and they even say you know when you buy the contract is you know these are all perks, and don't expect that they'll be there forever, and don't exactly. don't buy based on these perks. However, to Damon's point though, a lot of these things are very attractive, and it, and that's the same reason why when we were looking, we bought direct as well. Um, to to the point of you know should I buy seventy five and then do the rest, uh, or buy seventy five yeah. direct and then the rest on resale. I wish I had done that as well. I, I, but we kind of got caught up in the hype of it, I guess. When, but, uh... but, but you, you know what's also this is the other thing I'm going to say about direct. Um, and again, I, I don't know how many people, you know, I mean, they try to tell you about this as well. But look, here's the thing, you know, if we're talking about credit reports, right? The, the the age that we live in, you know, credit is a big deal. Okay, so when you buy direct, that contract does not go on your credit report. Right. So if you're paying cash for resale, great. Right. Like sounds great. But, you know, for me, the big thing was, is, man, just give me the points. I don't have to think about like 
my credit report, not that I have bad credit, but it's just, it's nice knowing that it, it's not involved if you're going to go buy a house soon or you're going to go pick up a car or you're going to do this, right? It's not pulled out like, I mean, we all understand how credit reports work, right? And how much debt you're in makes a difference on, you know, your pricing of your new car. It's a benefit. It's a bigger benefit than you think. You know, if you're going to be buying a house or going to be buying a car or going to be buying other things, you, you kind of have to keep that in mind. And for me, it was the ease of buying, you know, that got me to 150 and all mine are direct right now. That, I mean, and you're right. I mean, it does make it more complicated when you're buying some direct and then you're you're deciding, you know, to go to the resale market and, you know, trying to find some uh, some other points in, on resale Because, right, it's, it's, it's two different contracts then too, right? Yeah, then you, I mean, you it have is. two different yeah. contracts. That's correct. So, so mine I bought two different times, but it's still, I mean, it's two contracts, but I can use all my points because they're all the same use here and everything and it's all yeah. matched up and, together. And that that's the key is that, yeah, if, you, if you're going to do the direct and resale thing, you have to make sure that you use your lines up for, oh, for those yeah, contracts yeah, for because sure. if it doesn't, then you can't – basically, all your points are good at seven months and the 11-month thing becomes almost impossible to use because – the, you, your contracts just don't they're not attached together yeah, you have on to that book level. like yeah. Yeah. three days at 11 months and yeah. then <laughs> go again in seven months yeah. four months later right and yeah yeah exactly and you know we've talked about the 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 buy where you want to stay or buy whatever the cheapest is on the show before i mean i at first i remember i said you should buy where you want to stay and damon you you made a very compelling argument about why you shouldn't buy where you want to stay because and then i thought about it and i i own a bay lake tower i've stayed there once out of you know the the multitude of times i've stayed dvc i've only stayed at my home resort once yeah and i mean it, it, a lot of people will tell you you know oh you can't get anything at seven months out and i just don't think that's true i, it I depends think it, on it depends on when it is of course it, yeah it, it, when Christmas, and also yeah. <laughs> also the resort too because you also have to look at the amount of rooms that are available at yes. each resort some of them have a ton of of rooms available and it's never hard to find the particular type of room you're looking so, for so, so right? let me ask you guys a question so this is interesting this mm-hmm. will help kind of put this together too do you plan your trip about around where you want to stay or when you want to go uh, hmm um, <laughs> mine is always when I want to go. It's always when yes. we want to go. Yeah. And then, right. And so then that's we... the real compelling reason, right? Exactly. And then after mm-hmm. that, whatever the subset is of what I have available, I pick what I want. But like, if it wasn't available, I well, don't care. But, but I guess, so that, that is, that is a twofold thing, right? Is, you know, if, so if you have a particular time of year that you want to go and there is a resort that you absolutely like, this is the resort you're in love with, then yeah, you should buy at that resort. There, there's no question there. Yeah, right? it's a vacation. But, if it's if it's yeah. during a holiday, without a doubt. But if For not, sure. why bother? Or if it's Grand Californian, um, you know, absolutely. That's, you yeah. ha- I mean, if you if you're going to go to Disneyland a lot, you really need to buy Grand Californian because it's very hard to book there. They don't have a lot of DVC rooms. To Trevor's point, I, I think a good example of this is when I went to Boardwalk last year, and I learned a lesson really quickly because so sure you can't always get things at seven months out, but you can always wait list, right? And so I, I every resort that I've gotten has been a wait list. I've I've never gotten something that I wanted right away, and so you can wait list things. I had waitlisted Boardwalk, a studio, standard view, because that's the least amount of points. Well, if you go out and, you know, you could, there's some resources out there for it, like DVC Info has a list of room inventory. You find out that there's only like 15 rooms at the whole, and that might not be the exact number, but it's about that, at the entire Boardwalk Villas that are standard view uh, studios. So my odds of getting that are extremely low, right? So mm-hmm. once once I changed that to a garden pool view with, for a little more points, got the room, no problem. So it's it, it's that kind of stuff too that you got to watch out for too and you got to be smart about. Um, and, and I've always said to people, if you check it seven months out and your desired resort is not available, book what is, avail- is available and then, get, and then wait list. And then also stalk the website. You, because the wait list is not immediate. Like if something opens up from a cancellation, it doesn't immediately go off your wait list. You, I mean, I've gotten stuff before it's hit my wait list before because I saw it on the site. I called them immediately and got it. So I think that's that's the part of it too. Is you got to be vigilant and uh, diligent, I guess, too. Or just be like me, or be like Damon care. and just wander, yeah. <laughs> you know, around. Damon it all is, works out well. Damon's <laughs> the exception to the rule. I think. <laughs> So, and, I, I mean, yeah, go ahead, Trevor. And, and I was going to say, even like with us, we, we have our trip coming up in January. And our plan was, uh, you know, we, we just, we went in, we booked our home resort just to make sure we, like you said, so we had something. And then we knew at seven months, we were going to go back and review it and decide if we want to stay somewhere else. 
but you but you always want to make sure that yeah where, wherever you're going like set set your dates make sure you have something and and be willing to be flexible like like don't say you know Absolutely. i have to stay at this resort or i have to be at this place for this visit and because yeah if you don't get your wait list oh well you're still staying there you're still in disney it doesn't matter that much right at least i don't think there's any to the most places. of us yeah yeah, yeah they're yeah. all great yeah, yeah, and that's the thing is, you know, none of the like there, there's no B list in DVC guys. Like, like it's DVC. Oh, yeah. these, these are not, these are not, all yeah. the nice resorts. Yeah. <laughs> Some people would say Old Key West and Saratoga are B list, but hey, I, I've listen. never stayed there. I can't but say no, anything bad about it. But right. they're not though. I mean, no, they're, they're, they're very they're, nice Saratoga resorts. Saratoga pools they're, are nice. Yeah, they're they're well laid out and they're close to downtown Disney. So I mean, yeah. everyone wants well, to be close well, to the parks. Well, but some I, I think we like I think we need Disney. to get on to Mike's que- Mike M's question yeah. now because we're answering <laughs> some of that already. <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, I I didn't even look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually um, we got a second email from another Mike, and uh, so thanks Mike B again for uh, um, for for writing in. I hope that answered some of your questions. So Mike M wrote in. But, but uh, Mike Mike B, just remember that you can always reach out to us on Facebook too. Yes, just send us an <clears> instant <throat> messenger, uh, messenger, you know, and and we can all chime in and, and help you if you have any other follow up questions. Absolutely, we love when that yep. happens because then all three of us start responding to stuff and arguing with each other over messenger. So. Um, <laughs> It's fun. Um, so Mike M says, a uh, big fan of your show. I'm a new DVC member as well and wanted to see if I could ask your opinion about my upcoming vacation in January. Here's my situation. Well, first of all, he's going to be with Trevor. Like, dude, <laughs> no, Mike I, M, are you going to be there when Trevor's there? You guys I, might need to meet up. He might be, actually. You might be on the same flight because he's also from Alberta. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, my family we, is from Western Canada. <laughs> Sorry, Trevor. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was going to say, but Mike, we, we may have to talk and coordinate things here, but we'll, we'll do that on the side. <laughs> carpool. Carpool. Uh, so, <laughs> share a minivan from the hotel, uh, from the uh, from the airport anyway uh, <laughs> my family's from western canada uh red deer alberta close to trevor so when we travel to, to walt disney world we take one long vacation usually two weeks because travel costs are so high we are having a hard time picking where to stay and here are two options we narrowed it down to 14 nights old key west one bedroom villa or boardwalk uh, villas one bedroom villa um, I love the idea of staying on uh, of um, bleh, I love the idea of the location of Boardwalk Resort, walking to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, but their rooms are much smaller. Old Key West has huge rooms. The laundry room works as a great bedroom, like you were talking about, Damon, for a two year old, and easy access to Disney Springs. Both are basically the same number of points, so no advantage to either side. I'd love to hear your opinions. Thanks again. Keep up the great work. Uh, so this is so, a, this is interesting, though, right? It is. Because, well, so, <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead Tom. Go ahead. I, I wrote him back, and I said, have you thought about doing a split stay, doing one no, week No, don't do a split stay at 14 uh, days. No, no absolutely okay. not. He, he, <laughs> here's here's the, the argument against split stay. You know that when... And you find this more in cruises than you probably do on regular vacations. But I, I have this with our travel companions as well. Here's the thing. So let's say you're saying seven days. When do you start to worry about packing up? Probably day five, right? <laughs> yeah, probably about day five, right? That With a split stay, right? So, And then you're doing the same thing again. When you have 14 nights, you know when you worry about packing up? Day 12. Do you know how nice it is to go from one to 12 with not thinking about packing up? That's true. It's phenomenal. Well, and so, he did respond by saying he has young children and the idea of packing well, uh, them up is not even on the table. So, so, so. My, my, my bigger question would be how many kids does he have, right? Because, again, this kind of takes things into account as well. So I have I, a five. I believe it was two kids. I believe it was okay, two kids. Okay, so, so I'm at three kids in Boardwalk, and what I'm going to tell you is it does not seem small. And my daughter was in – that was the specific um, villa where we had her sleeping in the closet. Which was fine. Again, like this is not Disney sanctioned stuff, but I'll tell you that <laughs> she was in that closet and she was seven and there was no problem. <laughs> she loved it. Um, I've never been to Old Key West and here's what happens. We always talk about going to Old Key West and then by the time we're ready to book, we just, some, like, we're just we never do it. We always go somewhere else. This time we were actually supposed to go to Old Key West and we're going to be at Animal Kingdom again. So I would vote for Boardwalk Villas. The room size is not an issue, especially for five of us. We are only there for a week. I've never stayed two weeks, but I can tell you, you know, for regular weeks, it is not a problem. Um, That would be what I would say. And the thing is, walking to Epcot and Hollywood Studios is a huge advantage over access to Disney Springs. Because here's the thing. You're never running to Disney Springs. 
You may be running away from Disney Springs because you have to get to one of the parks, but you're <laughs> yeah. never running to Disney Springs. Sure. You will be running to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, so you might as well be as close as you can. That's and my opinion. Just to just to update what I was saying before, he said, trust me, I love the idea of a split stay, but when traveling with kid, two kids, five and two, they come with some serious baggage, literally. Okay. So <laughs> he said, when yeah, we arrived to set up camp, it, the thought of moving camp is a bit of a nightmare. So yep. I, I get that. I get that. So. Yeah, so so I guess I, I'm with you on this one, Damon, because, um, and this is speaking from my last trip where we stay at the Polynesian, just having access to a park where, you know, you don't have to get on a bus, you don't have to, you know, transfer or do any, you know, weird commute stuff or, or you know, get in your car or whatever is a huge benefit, especially when you have, you know, smaller kids. Being able to, you know, if you decide that, you know, originally your plan was to go to Magic Kingdom, but you realize that's too far, so you cancel it and you just walk over to Epcot, it feels a lot nicer than, you know, well, now I have to get on a bus and go back to Disney Springs or, you know, it's it's it, it's a lot of extra time that you don't really account for. And, and I'm going to say something weird that may not apply to um, to everyone. Um, But I have my kids are athletes, right? And I myself would like to stay in some sort of shape. There is something (laughs) to be said about eating a lot at Disney, right? They have great food. It's wonderful. You know, having the ability to walk places sometimes just feels good. Like it just makes you feel better. Um, We try to walk wherever we can, to be honest with you. And again, yes, it's tough because you're walking there and then you're walking in the park. But the amount of walking from your hotel to the park is almost minuscule in comparison to how you're walking in the park anyway. So I find it like a good little pick-me-up to get started for the day. I like that. And even coming home, I think that you – you know, home as in, you know, home to your resort. Coming back, yeah. Yeah. You know – you are going to benefit if you're coming back from Epcot or Hollywood Studios and not have to deal with the buses. There's just no sure. ifs, ands, or buts about that. Especially and, after, like, the fireworks or something like yeah. that. It's, it gets yeah. crazy. Yeah, and and I'll, uh, to that point is, you know, for the amount of time, if you, like, when you walk out of, of uh, one, of the, um, one of the theme parks and you have to, you know, walk over to the bus, get on the bus, you, you may not be sitting on the bus. You know, usually people will give up a seat, but... Um, sorry, I've, I've seen so many, uh, dads with strollers where, you know, they're, they've got the stroller folded up and they're trying to hold it. And I'm saying this to you, Mike, cause I, I I'm sure you, you, you're probably going to be in that position where you're the one, you know, trying to deal with the stroller. You don't want to be on the bus. You don't want to be the one doing that. Dude, I would say, I would say, this is, <laughs> see, I, I yeah. would say that this is also another reason to why you shouldn't bring a stroller and you should rent strollers, honestly, mm-hmm. especially if you're coming from that far, unless you're talking about umbrella stroller only. Because I took um, a really nice uh, McLaren br- umbrella stroller, and that was fine getting on and off. But otherwise, I would rent. I would yeah, rent. but I, even with the rented ones, it's still you know just getting having to do all that bus transferring. It Ugh. doesn't pay for itself. And and for the amount of time you spend there is, yeah, that's the same amount of time that you are walking back to Boardwalk from, from Epcot Which is a nice walk, Studios. By the way. Yeah, exactly. I would I would much rather do that than get on a bus to go to Heck old Key yeah. West. So I, yeah. I think I think we I think we've all kind of talked ourselves into this that um, for your question, Mike, um, Boardwalk Villas will probably yeah. be a much better choice, even if you're concerned about the room size, which we don't think the room size is going to be a huge issue for you. No. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, I would pick Boardwalk over Old Key West any day. I like the location of it. The rooms are great. The theming at Boardwalk is incredible. The nighttime stuff at Bo- Boardwalk is great, too. There's magicians on the Boardwalk doing stuff. There's performers. There's games. Uh, you know, there's food everywhere. It's The Boardwalk is just such a great atmosphere. So, And I, I think it also depends a little bit on what your family likes, you know. So if you guys like the seclusion and you like it to be a little more quiet, then maybe Old Key West is a better option. But... Boardwalk is full of activity. I don't think anyone goes to Disney for the, to have a quiet vacation. <laughs> be, I mean, surprised. I could be wrong. I mean, I'm not surprised. even <laughs> the tree houses, maybe. But I, yeah, I yeah, I, I know my best friend's parents have DVC and they have an insane amount of points. And they don't even they haven't gone to the parks in like ten years. They just go. They stay at Saratoga for a week. They go to Disney Springs. They go around the area. Yeah, I it's I know. Try right, I, but 
And that, that's fine for <laughs> that's them. Not a good, that's not exactly. a good use of points, though. I agree with you. But <laughs> I, I also I do want to point out, though, to them, um, you know, we were surprised by this when we stayed at Boardwalk. The, the walk from Hollywood Studios is a bit of a haul. It's not, like, really close like it is to Epcot. It is a little further. So I'm just I'm it's just letting you know. Bad, no, it's maybe a 15 20 minute walk. For people at, that ride Space Mountain, it's not bad. It, it, <laughs> I'm just letting, you, I'm just throwing it out there for expectation sake cuz a lot of people think it's right next to it and it's not. Mike, it if, is if a you don't ride Space hike. Mountain, it's a little bit of a hike. <laughs> but but I'll say this is that, you know, it's still 100 times better than uh, bus, trying to take yeah. the bus from uh, yeah. Caribbean Beach to Ooh, anywhere. That's right? the worst. I don't <laughs> that is the worst. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I, I hope we answered your question. I, I think that was a, we, it was a good discussion here, but, um, I do want to, I, and this is not on our, on our list today, guys, but I wanted to throw another thing in here. We got another email from a listener, mm-hmm. um, not a question. So this is just more of a self congratulations, how great we are type of email. Um, she, this is uh, Laura. Laura had emailed us, um, late last year asking for advice on uh, buying. And she said, uh, just wanted to say hi. And thanks to you and the crew for answering my questions and the podcast as a whole over the last few months, we officially had our first ever DVC stay as members this past week. It was in a one bedroom at the boardwalk. Look at that. And it was amazing. Uh, a DVC stay is completely different from a regular hotel stay at Disney. I completely see that now. We did uh, the Moonlight Magic event at Typhoon Lagoon on our trip, and it was awesome. I happened to do the Animal Kingdom one back in April, too, as there were tickets available, so my sister and I went. They were both wonderful, uh, but doing the water park at night was such a treat. I uh, highly it recommend that one. bad. Because <laughs> right? I'm going to be there for that, and I'm not doing not it because I don't want to spend the money. But no, um, it makes me feel bad. <laughs> We, we took so many DVC tips, DVC tips and suggestions for this trip and had an amazing time. So thanks for all the answers and the podcast info over the journey. It's been almost a year now that we've gone from researching DVC to a completed stay as members. So I just think that's cool because she's been with us since for a long time and she listened to us and she asked questions and she went from a prospective buyer to a buyer to having her first visit. So we're happy for you, Laura. Thanks yeah, for writing awesome. in. Where, you need to add the clapping sound here. I okay, clap, clap, clap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I can do that in post. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to thank you for writing in again and uh, and for listening, Laura. So we we appreciate it, and we're we're so glad we were able to help you out. It's really cool. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you guys want to? I was gonna say any more emails. No, I'm we chomping need to at the through. bit for the next one. I don't yeah. know, man. There's so many. Okay, you're chomping at the. Oh yeah, Damon's excited about this. No, so, because I found something today. Oh, okay. I All found right. something okay. in my house that's, today that was very interesting. That's exciting. Okay, let's. Okay. So we t- we've been talking for the past couple weeks, uh, past couple shows, I should say, about this mysterious Project 89 that's going on, right? And. We actually, we've been speculating that it was a DVC resort, and I mean, maybe we just guessed correctly and we got lucky, but it now appears that this is going to be a hotel on the River Country site. A design firm and a construction uh, company has been selected. Um, It's being speculated uh, now that it's going to cost $350 million to build. It's going to have 300 DVC rooms, 400 regular rooms. Um, and you know, I don't know if it's going to look like the, uh, the original one that they, they designed the Fort wilderness style DVC resort, if they're going to do something different, but man, haunted, we got something haunted right. River country, we got to be haunted <laughs> river country. And you guys are going to be like, Oh my goodness. I yeah. can't believe it. I, I will, I will be so flabbergasted if that's actually a thing. Be amazing. But. Haunted river country. First of all, I don't know what I would do. It would be like, you know, I listen to some other podcasts, some sports podcasts, and they're like, man, I think the team like listens to us sometimes. And I'm like, man, <laughs> I think Disney listens to us. So, so here's the interesting part. Yeah. I'm building a house. So as I'm packing to move at some point, I don't know when this house is ever going to be done, but I'm packing to move. So I go downstairs, I'm looking through a whole bunch of old photo books. And what do I find? But a photo book filled with my first Disney trip. Um, wow. I guess I must have been 12. I'm guessing here. I don't remember. Um, but let's just call it 12. Because actually, I didn't go with my parents. My aunt and uncle took me, which was which was very nice. And um, I have like probably a close to 40 to 50 pictures of myself at River Country on all the rides. And I just wow. thought it was the coolest thing. Um, and actually, I have some pictures of in the park as well. But I just thought it was the coolest thing that, you know, I have all these River Country uh photos and I, awesome. I was yeah i was a little nostalgic because like man i loved river country i think you know being the first time that i went was really cool and just river country was awesome i mean it just yeah. it, it was awesome so I, I think that was very interesting i mean i think that if 
man, I might just have to buy some points here just for nostalgia at this point. <laughs> just for nostalgia's well, sake. Yeah. You need to keep those pictures nearby, though, for when, when this resort's done. Because mm-hmm. I – and I'm calling this now is that there will be some sort of tribute in there or there will be some decor that I think it's going to be the pool. Well, there'll be the pool, but I can bet you there'll be little details around that people won't even necessarily know what they are or understand, but it'll be throwbacks. There'll be all those little details, and I bet your pictures will have some clues to to things that we should be paying attention to in this resort. Uh, yeah, I don't I, know if my, if my pictures were that detailed. A lot of me on the water slides, man. I, I'm in tubes. Okay. <laughs> I, I totally agree with that, though, because – they River Country was such a beloved place, and when they shut it down, people were so sad about it. If they're going to build a hotel in there, they're going to do some well, major Because I don't think they've ever shut anything it. down like that, right? Like, they would yeah. be talking about shutting down Tomorrowland, right? Like, dude, <laughs> that would be crazy if they shut down Tomorrowland. It's at the same level, right? It was the only water park yeah. that Disney had. Mm-hmm. At the I time, mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was really cool. It's funny you say that, that you found those pictures, Damon, because I was talking to my dad, and first of all, my dad didn't even know I did a DVC podcast, let alone that we have 32 episodes. But <laughs> That seems like a family thing. You might you know, need to work that out. Yeah, probably. But he told me that when I was a little kid that I did go to River Country. He did take that he and my mom had taken us to River Country, and I had no photos idea. or it didn't happen. I didn't see any photos. Fo- I haven't seen any photos, but I have no That's recollection of this. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I, listen, I, I don't disagree, but um, I have no recollection of this. Uh, but he claims that we were at River Country, and he knows nothing about Disney. So the fact that he was able to go, oh, yeah, you went to that to River Country. It was like, oh, okay, so you actually you kind of know that that's that's something that we did. So I mean, I guess I was there at some point. But you're right. I, I, I want to see pictures. You. I want to <laughs> see pictures. <laughs> I want to see pictures. I mean, I, there's pictures. Of, there's pictures of me in front of the jumping fountains at Epcot when I was like three. Okay. But you know. that's fine. But unless you were in a pitcher in a tube that had green water, <laughs> green water. doesn't count, man. <laughs> doesn't count. We're not even talking about this hotel at all. I like, <laughs> no, I mean, so, there's not a lot to talk about. It's going to be well, 300 rooms. Awesome. We just, it's going to be 400 regular rooms. We just great, wanted to but con- it, it, congratulate yeah. ourselves. That's all. <laughs> I, well, I think it, until it, they announce what the design is going to be. True. And I, I will say this, and, and I told, I mentioned this to you guys earlier too, is that, for everyone that's wondering about this is this is still a long, long ways off because we still have Riviera yes. that's being built there. Yeah. If this is a DVC resort, they are not going to start selling it until after Riviera is built and being sold because they don't want to compete with themselves. Right. Absolutely. Nope. So, nope. and is so, there, there's a percentage number before they'll even open a new place. Isn't there something I thought there was something yeah. around that? Yeah. Yeah, well, so I, so expect this in correct. like five years, kind of thing. Well, and you know they're building; they're already building so many hotels. At the, I mean, they're building the Riviera, they're building that new Coronado Springs uh, uh, building, oh. they're building the Star Wars hotel. I mean, there's just all these things that they're building. Star Wars at the hotel doesn't really count, though. It doesn't. That's kind of its own thing. True. Yeah, that's true. like it's almost a ride hotel. That's yeah. true. I, I, the thing I find interesting about this is we had posted this on our Facebook page, and we had several people really concerned about the fact that there was going to be another resort in Magic Kingdom and the the fact that that just meant more people coming to... You can only be in one place at one time. Mm-hmm. So does it matter where the hotel is? You know what I mean? Like, you're... I don't know. I don't think so. Well, and I, I'm thinking with all the things they're adding over the next couple of years, you know, with all the expansions to Epcot, the the new lands in yeah, Hollywood the, Studios. I mean, I mean the only coming, thing that's really... Tron, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the only thing that's really adding space, though, is Star Wars, right? Well, yeah, no, Toy I mean, Story. Well, Toy Story Land's adding space. Star Wars Land is adding there space. There was nothing back there? Toy Story Land was a straight no, dirt? No, that was there, part of the Backlot Tour. And, yeah. back, so, and so, backstage offices. Yeah. So Backlot Tour was a whole bunch of unused space as far as park space goes. Yep, That was awesome, though. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean that um, that that backlot tour kind of fell apart for me though when they got rid of the live spielers and they started doing a recording and then I was like oh man this mm-hmm. kind of stinks and then they got rid of like the the like the fake houses the facades the golden you know. girls houses right yeah the, yep. yeah that that was uh, that was a bummer but that's besides the point but um, so but, but as far ahead, as, as park space goes so then so those are the, your big main lands there's also an expansion in Tomorrowland with the Tron ride that's it's pretty mm-hmm. big and it goes on the other side of the track so they're they're expanding out that's over space yeah over the track I mean, so that, that's you, yeah i mean you're also talking really so even at this hotel i mean what are you talking two thousand people so yeah what? that's that's yeah. a good point because you're only talking you know if you're talking 700 rooms like at if you three go person a room on average yeah like i mean you're not talking about a ton of people and when you spread those mm-hmm. out over four parks i mean it's like nothing and nah. and truth be told these people are going to come to disney world regardless of whether there's a new hotel there or not 
right? Well, Disney well, just wants to get it. their piece of the pie, right? So. Yeah, at some point, at some point, right? I know that they've offered up some stuff to you know the other hotels and things like that. Dude, don't be surprised. I'm going to call it here. They're going to call it be, back. They're going to call them back. Absolutely. Number one, hundred percent. And here's the other thing: do not be surprised if the benefits for staying at Disney go up and, and get better. Because mm-hmm. with all these rooms, they're going to make their money, right? And they make money by getting people to come to these rooms. So do not be surprised if there's other things that are offered um, for Disney in regards to this. So being a DVC member will have its privileges, right? Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And well, and let's not forget, though, too, Epcot is also expanding, too. That whole Ratatouille area, that's expanding. Ratatouille. There's been... Haven't we seen that ride already? Uh, we, oh. We, we, we but have. Haven't but we that, seen Tron already? The whole, per, the whole pavilion's getting <laughs> not, bigger. But not here, but yeah. You're going to have Guardians. Um, but And then there's also, you know, there's been a ton of plans for Epcot that they haven't announced yet, uh, like new countries and new rides in the, in the uh, World Showcase. So there's other stuff we probably don't even know about yet that is going to come online, too. So, and there's been a rumor that they're going to expand Frontierland forever. I mean, there's so a lot of things about this for a so, second. So, new ride versus, I'll even give it four people per room, which I think is a little too much, but let's just call it 3,000 people per 90% hotel, capacity, per, right? Because they usually operate like 90, 95%. So, well, so, yeah, fine. Even call it 3,000, which would be far above what I think it will have. But a new ride has got to equal 3,000 people a day. Oh, got yeah. To. Far more than that. Some of those yeah. do a thousand people an hour, depending well, on the yeah, rides. Yeah, these new ride systems are far more efficient than than like pirates or any of those. So yeah, that would be like one of those things where maybe that we'll have to start uh, forcing Disney to do that. You cannot open a new hotel until you open a new ride. It was kind of one of those things where <laughs> I wanted a second dog, and my wife was like can't have a second dog until we have a kid and i was like oh, okay we can do that then. <laughs> see i said the problem. opposite I, I i told my wife another dog or, or a kid either one we choose one or the other uh, <laughs> but and so back to your point just real quick tom i um i just i remember this too when i was thinking about the whole space space issue is that in epcot specifically most of Futureland is not really used right now nope like it like interventions is kind of done Nothing. Yeah, empty. Uh, um, you've got that whole area. That that area around um, uh, where Spatial, Guardians uh, is going. Uh, Mission Space, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. that whole area, it's big and it's empty and there's not a lot of people there. So there's lots yep. of room for people to go. <laughs> Wonders of Life is just sitting there empty. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they're redoing the roof on it. We talked about this a couple of times. They're redoing the roof. They hired an Imagineer to do something on the inside. So that's going to be technically new space because right now that's yep. not being used at all. That's just sitting there vacant. Um, you know, so, and there's a ton of space around Epcot too. So I, I don't know. I, I understand the concern about overcrowding. I, I just don't know if that, I, I don't know if it's a problem that they can solve. They can keep adding rides and land all they want, but and, it's, you know, people are going to keep and, coming. So. Yeah. The, the thing is, is that, uh, I mean, people are upset because of, you know, Disney's adding one hotel. How many other hotels have sprouted up around that area oh, yeah. that are not Disney in the meantime? That's, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. If, if, even, if Disney, if, even if Disney doesn't build this hotel, those people are going to come. You know what I mean? There's, regardless, the people are coming. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. So, I, I, I'm just I'm psyched about this. I think this is really cool. I like more options around the Magic Kingdom area, uh, even if it's not going to have a monorail stop. I... I because I think, as you guys know, one of my favorite resorts is Wilderness Lodge, and you know this is right by there. So I think this is great. I'm I'm excited about this. So let's talk Star Wars, more mm-hmm. Star Wars, because there's new information about this. So, and I, I can't wait to butcher the name of this uh, robot that they're going to be building. But um, <laughs> I can't wait to see the the messages we get about this. Um, so a couple uh, galactic nights just happened at Hollywood studios. And during that time they had an event where they revealed some new things about galaxy's edge, not like anything earth shattering. Um, we do know now that the village that you're going to be going into is called a uh, black spire outpost. You know, that's interesting. The, the big interesting thing here I thought was kind of cool. And you got one of you guys want to take a shot at what this thing is that they're going to be building. <laughs> they they announced the that they're creating a real cat. Tuka Lothcat, is that how you say yeah. it? Okay. So those of you that watch Clone, the Clone Wars series or Star Wars Rebels, I guess you'll be uh, familiar with this creature. Disney announced that they are building a real walking character that's based on that. That's going to be just wandering around Star Wars land. That is really Probably cool. made out of paper mache or something like that. No. Well, like it, it's going to be small, though. Cause, cause that, it's got to be. Because those are they're, they're cats from the planet of Lafal, right? 
You're and, speaking a language I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, in, in yes. Rebels, they're, they're, I mean, it's the size of a cat. It's it, literally, it, it's It looks to like be, the Cheshire cat almost. Yeah. Honestly. So, with so a raccoon tail. I saw the picture of it. I just, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, so, so they're small, wait, wait, so hold it's on not a second. like... Wait, yeah. wait, wait, Trevor, hold on a second. Mm-hmm. Tom, you don't watch any of those shows? I mean, I, I'm... I oh. like Star Wars, but I'm not like oh, deep into man. the Star Wars see, universe. You know, see Trevor, see how it is. <laughs> I know. So we might have to revoke his Star Wars pass. Like maybe we won't let him get in. <laughs> you'll, oh, you, his you'll, magic his so, magic band will beep, and they'll just like, sir, it's okay, time to hold, go the other hold way. On. So, so you know what? We we will check out the Star Wars hotel for you first, Tom. Okay, and we will let you know if it's okay for you. So you All can't right. come. <laughs> Until we go first. <laughs> All right, listen, I like Star Wars, but I'm not like an over the top fan of Star Wars. And it's not that I dislike it, I'm just not like a crazy hardcore fan of Star Wars. That's all. But you need to watch Rebels, seriously. I, Rebels I've heard it's good, great. Man. I yeah. would love to check it out. I, you know, I, but I, I have not seen it. No, I, I have not seen that one. So, well, here's the question, but, Trevor What color? Ooh, will there be multiple ones? Oh. Because, so, so. We have to key Tom in here, so the, 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 they can be all different colors, right? Yes. The cats, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, maybe like, there'll be multiple colors, colors too. Maybe there'll be multiple colors since they're just going to be roaming around. I yeah, know. I mean, I, I can't, I can't see them building a whole ton of these. So, I would say, you know, two to three at most. But, but, but again, like, are we going to step on them? Like, I, can't I don't see understand that being that's, on a walkway. Well, that's I what them, I wonder. Because I, I see these being like maybe in a place where you can't walk, right? So, well, like I guess, the lightsaber show or something like that. Yeah, that's like what off I to see, the side yeah. or something. You know, where it's not because otherwise these things are going to get punted you know, like you know, cool soccer though. balls. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's what could be interesting though. What about an on planet zoo? Oh, <laughs> that'd be mm. kind of cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> That might be interesting because then, right there, they can kind of contain them, but they could still look like real creatures. That would yeah. be kind of cool. That would, would, be would that be weird if they if they actually made like a pen for these things and people just sat there and no, watched? No, I think that would be awesome. Walk around in the pen. I mean, but I'd because think about it. it, right? When you <laughs> when you go, uh, all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go tangent here and just talk about some other parks for a second, right? But like when you go to Dollywood, one of the coolest things is seeing the the bald eagles there, right? Because they're they have like a bird show and there's all sorts of cool stuff there. Right. And then like they're in some enclosures um, and they have a lot of animals there. And again, I think that that's pretty cool, right? You'll sit there and watch, but even going to just to, to Bush gardens and just watching the horses, like, yeah, why not? I think it's cool. I, I, I I'm sit with and watch you. the horses. I'm with you. I mean, I, that's why I love animal kingdom. I, I'll just go and sit there and watch, uh, you know, some of the monkeys run around for a while. And, but you but know. those are actual animals though. Like these would but be, what's the difference, right? Let's go, let's, let's go Westworld on you. What's the actual <laughs> okay. difference? All right. Fair, fair enough. Right? Fair enough. Yeah. If they look real enough, I mean, which I'm assuming they're going to go for. As oh, real I don't as know how real they can possibly look. Right? So the, the weird thing about this is, is that I'm sure there are sketches of them, but like in rebels, you're talking straight up CGI, right? Yeah. Like, I don't, sure. I don't know if there's other true, you know, realistic sketches. I'm not sure about that. My my knowledge doesn't go that deep. Yeah, I'm, I, my worry is that these would enter into the uh, disturbing part of Uncanny Valley when they're in real life, because a lot of things that look good in CG when they, you know, <laughs> try <laughs> to do them. Out? Yeah. So, but, but like, here, here's <laughs> the other interesting thing, right? Is that dude? They got like they got teeth. Mm-hmm. They got teeth. Yeah, they're like cats. Real big <laughs> teeth, though. Like, not just like little cat teeth. They got like real teeth. Yeah. So, I don't know how you do that and not keep them tucked away somewhere. Well, right? Like, what if know. they make them like dog size? Like, what if they're like a golden retriever size? I mean, still, then, I, don't, I still don't think you can do it, man. I, don't, I mean, I, I'm yeah, here's the other thing, too. I'm interested. Think about all the service dogs. <laughs> no, I mean, you got to think no, about things wrong. like that, right? You're not wrong. Yeah. So I, I think they're going to be in cages. Personal opinion. Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, that's. Uh, and that will still opinion. be cool. I'm yeah. still cool with that. No, for right. Sure. It, it, and the nice thing about that is, is it can kind of be used as an area. Like, man, where are the wolves at? I think the wolves are at Dollywood. There's a wolf enclosure that's like awesome, and it's not that big either, right? So I could see it like being the same sort of thing that the wolf enclosure at Dollywood is. You know, it's like you're kind of up on a bridge looking down, and, you know, it's like a hmm. concrete big bridge that's kind of off to the side of one of the paths, so it sucks up a lot of people. And then what they do is they have, you know, somebody come out and kind of give like a lesson about wolves, you know, three, four times a day, and that's kind of put on the calendars, you know, at, you know, one, four, eight and ten you know there's you know a 30 minute whatever like i see something like that happening i could see that too 
I, I, I think the other interesting thing that they talked about in this is about the battle escape attraction. Um, and this has been speculated for a long time that this ride is going to be a two parter. Basically, there's going to be a I mean, I would call it maybe an extended pre show, maybe. Um, okay, I, I was going to ask, how is it in two parts? But OK, let's. Well, so uh, <laughs> what they're saying, you remember they a while ago, they showed like this transporter looking thing that's a, like a trackless vehicle. And it looks like it has some sort of droid on the front of it. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's really what the ride vehicle is going to be like. Well, apparently that is going to be the thing that takes you to the ride. Right. So there's going to be some sort of pre-show that you're in that. And that takes you to the second part of the ride, which sounds really cool. And like nothing that I've ever heard of <laughs> that I can. Well, think it sounds of. like a great way to keep people moving is what exactly. Like. Yeah. People eating people. Yes. eating. Yes. So, so basically you get a people mover to your the actual ride. But a people mover that people are excited about. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I still like. I mean, Tom's mover. always excited about people mover too. Cause, you know, <laughs> I love the people mover. Exactly. Because um, I get to look is, at, I get to look at Space Mountain from the inside and go, oh, I don't have to go on that. I'm just going to watch the inside. Um, <laughs> no, no. That, that might be a whole like you know blog episode. You know, Tom, you're gonna have to wait until like we all go together for Space Mountain. I, I'm, and I, I'm and gonna I truly, have to seriously like, yeah, we have. To I get will plan you a trip there. around that. <laughs> yeah, I will seriously plan a trip Man. just to see Tom go on Space Mountain. Killing and, me. and I think what the interesting part is going to be is I hope you get the most daredevilish daughter ever that wants to go on everything well, because you will not be able to look her in the eye and not go on rides. Well, you know, that's that's my wife, right? My wife's the one that goes skydiving and goes on any roller coaster and, you know. It's that's, different, though, because you can yeah. tell your wife no. Yeah, it's easy. Right. Sure, nope, yeah. not going. Like, yeah. my wife was like, my wife was like, are you going on Wild Eagle for the second time? I'm like, nope. And my, ki- my kids go, hey, are you going on, you know, super flippy down, make you sick the eighth time? I'm going, yeah, I guess. <laughs> This is why I rode Tower of Terror six times when we went to oh uh, Disneyland because yeah. my sign was like we're doing it on repeat, and I was like, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, so, so I gotta hope she's a wimp like me. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know. This may. I think this this is a cool way. I, I mean, I don't know what this I think is really it's awesome, look like. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't know if did you guys see the pictures? Oh gosh. And it, what did we decide these were? Adats? Is that what they were? The giant things? Um. Gosh, you guys know Star Wars better than I do. The big giant like the walker AT-ATs? things. The AT-ATs. Yeah. AT-ATs. Did you guys see the pictures yeah. <laughs> of people standing next to them? I mean, they're huge. They're like life size, and you're going to go under those at some yeah, point. Yeah, they're, they're massive structures. I mean, we already have we already have one outside of Star Tours. Yeah, but and that's not a real size one though. Is yeah, it? are they no, bigger than that? I think they're bigger than that. Yeah, I think they're bigger than that. It's. I mean, it just looks so cool. I, I and I do think it's interesting. We don't know what the second half of the ride is, right? So I mean, not that we know what the first half is, but we it's it's Probably interesting. Be some VR crap or something. I don't think it's. I, they've said they don't want to do VR. So flight of know. passage too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Here's Electric why I don't loop. think that that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> that, that show that show building is so big that there's there's no way it's like that. It's a dark ride. It's I I don't know. I don't think it's going to be that type of experience. Well, well see, here's the question. So if it's a dark ride... Wait, all right, hold on. So are you going on Guardians of the Galaxy? I don't know. I'll have to see what that's going to look like. Wow. Mm. Okay. I'll, I'll, definitely go, I'll definitely go on both the Star Wars rides for sure. I, I think we need to, like deny Tom any information about these rides so that he can go on them blind. <laughs> oh, it's I'll like just watch YouTube doing, videos, okay? It, I mean, it, it's, it's, this is what uh, I'm doing to so my fun. daughter. I'm doing this to my daughter, but I'll talk about that when we get there to my trip, which is coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, stay, yeah. stay yeah. tuned. After we'll next talk about that in break. a minute here. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, last thing here, uh, and this, unless there's anything else you guys want to talk about, about the other two topics. I know we talked a lot about the robot thing. Um, yeah, we already talked about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, separately from this event, Disney Parks Blog came out and confirmed the rumored location of the Star Wars Hotel. So we actually That's talked awesome. about this a couple of podcasts ago, and they confirmed basically that the Star Wars Hotel will be built at the back of Galaxy's Edge. Um, in a site that's literally right behind the backstage area of where Galaxy's Edge is. So this is going to allow a seamless connection to the hotel. And, and I think you're going to be able to get into the park for an hour by yourselves. That's oh, just what I'm for calling. sure. Yeah. I, I mean, you're going to have to. I, I think there's no way you wouldn't be able to. I mean, because it's for the amount of money you're paying, for sure, right? I think it's going to be part of the storyline. I think they're going to, listen, they're going to need the park to to envelop you in the storyline. Absolutely. And there will be special events, I can bet you. It will mm-hmm. be like you get up and you're supposed to go for breakfast and you take a detour into the park and stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah. 
I just, I mean, this is, I, I think it's cool that the, I mean, the fact that it's actually being built, you know, it's, it's cool that this is happening because it sounded like a great idea and a really exciting idea. And it also an incredibly ambitious idea to the point where it, I could see them canceling it because it was just too much. But I, I the, just hope the cost is not prohibitive. Well, I think if I remember correctly, they were testing it to be like a thousand no, per night per person. All guesses. All guesses. But I thought they mm-hmm. were surveying that, at that amount or something. I don't know. I don't know about that. So a thousand, what did you say? A thousand I thought per it was night like per th- guest? Yeah, maybe. Oh, that, that would make sense. Are but it's only me? like a two or three night thing. Like it's a package so deal with food. Ten, and Ten grand for two nights. Would I do that? I think I would. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, 15 grand for three nights puts it out of my reach. That's a lot of money. I'm, I'm sorry to say. Um, I, that would put it out of my. Well, I could do maybe once they'll in have life. tiered packages. You know what? No, that's... Don't, don't do that, please. <laughs> like, no. Well, just, two just... night or a five night or I don't know. I mean, oh, maybe two different storylines. Yeah, like, like yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a condensed one and then there's a longer one. And or so... just two distinct storylines so you go back. Because here's the thing why would you ever want to go back? That's this is true. true. Two storylines would be yeah. interesting. But, dude, the thing is, is that think about it. Like, the, the five days, who's even going, right? Like, so for the five days. If they even uh, allow it. Yeah, that would be weird. Because yeah. they might I not think, even have it that far. I mean, I could see them doing, man, like, a maximum of four days or something like that. I mean, that's just, again, 15000 for three days kind of puts it out of my scope. That, that's the only problem. Yeah, I don't remember what the exact amount was, so somebody maybe can correct us on that. But I know they were serving I think prices. There was, I, I but, didn't even think they were doing that. I don't know. But I, I thought that was all hearsay. But I mean, if right, it was a know. thousand per person for like a three night stay with everything included, I mean, that's. Yeah, you're talking about a thousand per person for the whole thing. Yeah. That's different than per oh, night. You're I think it might be for the whole person. thing. It might be for the whole thing. For th- oh, thousand per cheap, person man. for that's, a three night stay, all that's inclusive. Too, that's too, too cheap because you can't yeah. even get a hotel room for that. That's true. So, that's no, true. that's not going to happen. It's got to be yeah. more than that. But anyway, so I digress. And you digress. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh,. Another thing we have on here, because a lot of you folks uh, that are DVC members are also uh, annual pass holders, um, Disney World is going to be offering pass holders the ability to get exclusive access to, to-, to Toy Story Land in September. When I think about this, it bas- well, here's Lame. the thing. Here's what I'm thinking. It says APs are going to be able to <laughs> register themselves and a guest for the event, um, but there's no details about the timing. So in my mind, I'm like thinking, when are they going to do this? Is it going to be like a couple hours after the park closes or before? It, like, doesn't, it doesn't matter. The park's already been open for two months. Lame. It sounds like Moonlight Magic, but for Toy Story Land. Yeah. Kind, yeah, kind of. I just, I, I, it's weird. And I also, I wonder though if this is to make up, because it doesn't seem like they're going to be doing an annual pass holder preview. I yeah. almost feel like they're yeah. trying to make up for that. I would agree. And yeah, that, that I, I think I think with the way Pandora went, I think they learned some things there that probably were not... Uh, I don't think they, they like the idea of pass holders and everybody getting in there ahead of time because it yeah. kind of... Well, pass holders are probably the most, especially DVC and pass holders are probably the the. I don't want to. I'm not. I want to use the word smartest. Hold on. I want to. There's another word that Fervent. I want to use. <laughs> I, that's Passionate not a bad word. Critical. I, I would say those two words are exactly where I was going. Oh, I say man, some APs are going to kill us, man. We are going to get hey, so many hey, emails hey, from APs. I I am an AP. I can say that. Well, and the thing is, is that, I mean, passionate's not a bad word, no. and neither is critical, right? No. Like, I mean, passionate mm-hmm. and critical. I, I think also the problem is, is that those are the people that would more likely video and have some sort of following out there as well. Yes. You kind of know what I mean? Sure. Like, I think there's a the, lot the of that vloggers, going around. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I do think it's I think it's interesting. I do wonder, I mean, if this is going to be a trend now, are they going to do this with Star Wars or how is that? I mean, I can't even imagine them doing any previews for Star Wars. It's going to be such a nightmare. Oh, they will. They'll, they'll do they, 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 Star they, Wars. I'm sure they will. But it's going to I, I can't wait to see all the complaining of like, how about oh, you charge can't get me in. for previews? That's what I want. Well, they are doing that at Disneyland. We actually haven't talked about this. They are doing a we don't care about Disneyland. I know, we, some of us do. Uh, they are doing a, a preview of Pixar Pier. Um, like a special event, but it's like two hundred bucks. But it's like a party, I would do that. you know. So I, that, that's something I would do. That I would do wonder if well, that is a test for something that they're going to do for Star Wars. Line. Yeah, who I'd be in on that. But that's no different than like a dessert party for fireworks or anything. Like, like you already have yeah. those paid premium events. So yeah, it's just a premium yeah. event to get into a land, you know, before anybody else, and there's food and it's a celebration. And yeah, I mean. I think it's I think it's like two hundred thirty bucks a person. I don't want to misquote it, but it's it's over two hundred, I think. So it's it's not a cheap 
cheap event but it's if you're really into pixar and you know that's something you want to do i could see it be working but i mean for star wars i feel like it's going to be way more expensive than that yeah that i mean oh my gosh the people so fighting people over something that. like that, that um, would get sold out I'm, seconds. I'm already planning two distinct vacations in 2019 because of star wars yeah like i don't even want to do one long one i just want two distinct ones because i just think that that's what i want to do to make sure i get everything going understandable Mm-hmm. So, right, so what are we talking about next? We're talking about my trip. Next. It's your yeah. We we got a Damon detour, and but this is know, not really a detour. This it's is not. A trip. It's we 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 need to talk about your trip because you're leaving in what a week? Yeah, yeah, um, a week and a day. I'm Tell leaving. us about it. Um, I'm staying at Animal Kingdom, Kidani or Jumbo? Oh, which is the better one? I mean, better is a relative wait, wait, term. Can, <laughs> Jumbo is the closer one. Yes, that's better. K- yes. Kidani is the DVC the, only one. K- Jumbo K- has Kidani is the stupid one that has its own bus stop that annoys everyone when they have but to get on But it's the it first bus stop they stop at on the way back. Doesn't matter. All right, so we're not staying at Kidani. <laughs> um, we're staying at the, the cool one. And um, let's see. Whew, I don't know if there's really too much exciting about this trip, just that we're going, because I've already been to Pandora, and we're missing um, Toy Story by like a week, which is nothing we can do. I said we travel with some friends, and they pick the resort, and they pick the time. And so, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to try to rope drop Flight of the Passage, even though I didn't like it. Everyone else seemed to like it. But the the interesting part about this is that we're going to try to do a lot on the cheap this time. So normally we spend a fair amount of money. And I know actually Trevor and myself had been talking about this and, and Tom was chiming in a little bit about, you know, how much money to bring to spend for food. And I know mm-hmm. that this time around we are going to try to keep that at a, at a minimum. So we'll do some good dinners and, and some good lunches. But in between that, we're going to try to keep those costs down. So we normally do breakfast at the hotel. So that consists of cereal, milk, uh, Pop-Tarts and protein bars. That covers the whole family. So really what we've been doing is we've been buying milk when we get down there. But milk's not cheap down there. We do have a car. We could stop at Walmart on the way. But I think we're going to end up just packing a cooler with ice and bring down milk that way, to be honest with you. Yeah. And then... Um, or you I could do like an Instacart or an Amazon Prime, you know. Yeah, I don't know. That's a little bit of a pain, too. I, I got these new awesome ice packs from Amazon that supposedly last 24 hours. You have to actually... You have to fill them like yourself when you get them at your house, like mix all the ingredients together. They don't come pre-filled. Anyway, oh, supposedly they last for 24 hours. Yeah. So I'll let you know how they work because I'm going to bring milk with them and maybe some other uh, perishables. So we're going to try to do that. Uh, we're going to do the void. I think that we'll end up doing it just once, unlike Trevor. Um, <laughs> Unless I you think love it so much, it, you got to do it again. He, I'm, I'm, he, he only planned on doing it once. He just ended up doing yeah. it twice. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like I said, we're, we're going to try to do a few dinners in Disney Springs. Like we did the Chef Morimoto uh, cart, the, the outside. I think we're going to do the restaurant. Um, I think we're doing one of the, the southern food restaurant there, which to me Homecoming. seems... Yeah, which seems silly to me because it's you know, good, I live in the South. It's good. Um, yeah, I'm sure it is. But like, I live in the South. You know what I want? Yeah, yeah, when yeah. I go there, I want Chinese food because there's no good Chinese food in the South. <laughs> so that's all I want to eat whenever so I'm true. there. So true. Um, or Italian. Italian's okay down here, but it's not as good as New Jersey. So anyway, that all being said, we're going to do a lot of food, but I, you know, I'm going to try to be a little more cognizant. So tickets, which was the, the big gripe, right? I didn't know what I wanted to do with tickets. We thought maybe we would go back in August. That trip has now turned into a Busch Gardens uh, SeaWorld trip. Um, which actually may not even be a trip at all, depending on how high school sports shake out. Right? We may actually have to cancel that anyway, so I'm glad I didn't book another Disney one. So we're not doing annual pass. So then I was going to do the three-day, three-day, right? So I was going to do three-day water park, three-day um, regular parks. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, the thing with that is my friends are going and they have seven-day passes, but we're getting there a day later than them due to a swim meet in Virginia. So we will be there for, you know, Sunday to Sunday. They have seven days. You know, we'll probably only need six. So I was like kind of flip-flopping back and forth. Do I do the three-day, three-day? I said, nah, I really want to do the four-four. The problem is, is that the difference in price between the three-three and the four-four, and, and by that I mean that you can go to the water parks the three days and then go to the regular parks on par- Park Hopper the three days. So it's called the Park Hopper Plus, right? Isn't that what that's called? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I looked at the three days, and I want to say it was like $2,000, right? There's five of us. So, and then I said, all right, well, let me see what the four day is. And the four day is like 2574 or something like that. Pretty, pretty close to, you know, or it's in the 25 somewhere, let's just say. 
I said, all right, so you know what? That cost me a fair chunk of change to kind of upgrade from three to four, but you know, maybe I want to do it. So I said, let me just click in the five day, five day. And the five day, five day is like less than $100 more. So I, I think I'm going to end up with the five day, five day because the difference between the four day, four day and five day, five day is less than $100. Um, so if I'm upgrading from the three to the four, I might as well just go to the five. So I think that's what we're doing. And we're going to hit the water parks because we have not been to the water parks in a long time. We love water parks, excluding my wife. But um, and because my wife doesn't really like them and the people we travel with do not like them, we never go. Uh, so this time we're going to do that because it's again, uh, we've been to Disney a lot, right? The kids go every year, at least once, maybe even twice, you know, to find something different to do. The water parks provide that for us since we haven't been there. The other very, very exciting thing that the whole entire family is excited about, excluding my daughter, is that it is going to be her first ride on Rock and Roller Coaster. She does not <laughs> love rides, but the rule we have in the house is try everything once. If you don't like it after that, we don't force you to go on it. Um, you know, and we don't force her to go on the super big things that like, you know, Dollywood or Universal, you know, we said, listen, it's Disney. Like, you know, if you're going to do an upside down roller coaster, this is the one you want to do. True. Um, you know, it's, it's less of the loops it's inside. They're not as high. They're, you know, it's not as, pretty smooth actually, as far as smooth. they go. It, it's it, as yes. Wild Eagle and Dollywood is a smoother ride, but way higher and way more loops. And it's one of the suspended ones. So I would not force her to go on that. But this, I feel like you got to go on Rock and Roller Coaster, right? Like she went on Everest was the last time we went. That was the ride she had to go on. I said, we pick one out for her each time. That Hey, listen, you got to try it. If you don't like it, that's fine. You go on it once, you, you know. We went on Verbolton, and again, she said I was never allowed to tell anyone this, but unfortunately, I have to tell everyone. And we went on Verbolton, <laughs> she bit me. She was so mad that she bit me. Oh she got gosh. off, and she was like, I did not like that ride. And I said, that's fine. You don't ever have to go on it again. <laughs> so we are all looking forward to her going on Rock and Roller Coaster. Can, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Did she like Everest? She loved it. So she did not want to go on it, but man, oh, man, did she love it. So She loved it. I personally feel, although rock and roller coaster does inversions mm -hmm. that it's not as intense as Everest. So I don't think so either. Yeah. I think she'll be okay with it. Um, you know, the launch is a little tough. I think that will be interesting, but it's over so quickly. The mm -hmm. ride is also, it, it's, I feel like the ride is also over pretty quick. Oh yeah. You, well, you know, so I, I, I hate to say this as someone that doesn't go on rock and roller coaster, but the launch can't be, all that different from when you launch on test track. I mean, you're going from test tracks, the fastest it, ride at it, Disney. So you end up going faster. The, test the launch is shorter. It's, it's a different type it's of fat. The it's acceleration quicker. is faster. Yeah. Makes sense. So, so yeah. top speed is not the same, but the acceleration is faster. That yeah. Cause sense. it's a shorter launch. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah. also going up kind of ish, right? Like it does a Cobra roll. Straight then up. Yeah. 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 For so, those that know loops, it, it's play like roller a roller coaster tycoon. It, it's, it's <laughs> a, it's a, it's a half loop with a, a uh, half corkscrew and then another half loop out, I believe. Right, it's a half loop, full corkscrew, half loop, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I like that ride. My it's my <clears throat> wife's favorite ride, so um, that will be interesting. But you yeah, should... I mean, we're we're excited to go. Um, the do other actually... thing that we're going to be, I'm sorry, yeah, Tom. I was just going to say, do you actually have any dinner dinner reservations, or you just we do? It? But I don't remember where they are because I didn't make them. <laughs> Nothing my wife interesting. Made them. You got to go to no. Viennapoli. I've been telling you to go to Viennapoli forever. I went to the other one, didn't I? Uh, I went to the other one. You went to a different one. That no, wasn't Via Napoli. Wait, what's Via Napoli? Where is it? That's the pizza it's place in, in Italy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I went to the, the I went to the restaurant right next to it. Yeah, but it's different. Why is it different? It's the same kitchen. <laughs> it's it is. The, you're right. It is the same kitchen. <laughs> you are correct. And, but, and where I went was better than the other place because it's just pizza. Yeah, but no, it's not just pizza. They have other things there. But well, whichever one I went to was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that restaurant in, in Italy is good. I'm just saying Via Napoli is awesome. That's all I'm saying. But well, anyway, yeah, continue. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're gonna like I said, we'll we'll try some you know new things in in Disney Springs. I think Disney Springs will be interesting. I mean, we were there last year, but it looks like there are some more places to eat, some interesting and new uh, things to do, like the Void and things like that. So I mean, it will be an interesting trip. But the other thing that we're trying to do is, my friend was telling me, you know, he's kind of switched. Um, jobs a little bit and hasn't had as much vacation time so he's looking to do a little more relaxing which will be interesting like i said i think as a relaxing vacation animal kingdom is probably a better choice than a lot of the resorts right i, I think that you know wilderness lodge is also another good one but animal kingdom is a pretty relaxing area so yeah. you know i think there may be some days i think he's got a day where 
they might not go to the, go to the park until like eight o'clock at night. You know what I mean? Like they may just hang out all day at the pool and then go to the park for fireworks or just for this. So it's going to be a different trip in that regard because there's nothing we're rushing to see. They have fast passes for Flight of the Passage. I mean, we'll rope drop it, but we've already been on it, right? So it's not the end of the world if we don't see it again. And again, I don't really care about the Toy Story stuff because it all looks stupid. So <laughs> I'm all right. Uh, I, I do. I do. Animal Kingdom Lodge is one of my favorite resorts. It's 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 up there like top. I just like sitting by the fire pit sometimes too. Yeah. Like just to come outside and sit on the rocking chair by the, the fire pit. Yeah. Because cool. a lot of people at Disney are going as again as their one vacation every few years. A lot of people don't love Disney like you know the three of us do that go every year. So when you go every year, you find that you know what it. it I need it to be a little bit more relaxing and I don't need to hit all those spots and I, you know, all those sort of things. And as, you know, the kids get older, I, I found that even our last trip to Epcot was enjoyable, but in a different way. You know, it was fun, Absolutely. but it was in a totally different way. Um, and, and I think that this will be one of those trips where we enjoy things in a different way, a little bit more relaxing, a little bit more exploring of Animal Kingdom, I think, as well, which will be nice. There's so much to explore at Animal Kingdom, too. Yeah, it's, There's like so many nooks and crannies of that park. I mean, even I don't like the food there. That's the only knock that I have. <laughs> I just don't like the food. Well, And not because it's, not because it's poorly done. It just is not to my palate. That's all. Sure. Well, um, you mean there's places other than Flame Tree? eat there or <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they all are no good I mean, wait wait no i'm talking about the resort no. oh, he's talking, oh, he's talking about like sana and oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah no no no, no. Okay, wait yeah. wait wait so let, let me rephrase that my favorite spot to eat exists in animal kingdom so <laughs> that's well yeah okay, he loved the pandora yak and yeti yeah. so yeah. that's oh, my yeah, jam yeti, that's right. so okay. i mean for me no, no no i'm just talking at the hotel so when you're doing quick serve at the hotel there is not a lot that i enjoy there which makes it a little difficult sure. um but, I mean, like I said, I think the other part of this trip is, for me, is that I'm going to try to, like, maybe even, like, power bar some lunches. Um, and, and, you know, kind of, like, the kids can eat and my wife can have what she wants. And, you know, I may try to power bar some lunches just to save some money. Again, like, if I have a big dinner, I might be good. This will be an interesting trip. Like I said, I'm going to try a, a bunch of different, you know, money-saving techniques. Um, my favorite money-saving technique of all time is, is one that... that I've come up with on my own. I'm sure other people have done it, but it's not like I've ever read it anywhere. It was one of those things. I purchase a Brita water filter before I go. I bring that Brita water filter with me, and I think that could probably save me close to $200. So we will all drink water. My family loves water. But mm-hmm. I'll tell you that Florida water is a little brutal. Okay? <laughs> well, if, and if you buy a Brita water filter like, and keep it in your DVC fridge, dude, you're good. You're yeah. covered. So and it costs twenty three dollars. I, I can go one step further on that. Is uh, so if you're walking around the park and you bring a water bottle with you, mm-hmm. you can get Brita water bottles that have the filter built into them. I don't like that because the problem is for me is that you just get a lot of carbon slush um, because of the the shaking and everything like that. that that's my personal um, opinion. I never had that's that with me. mine. I've uh, I, I had I had a little carbon slushies, you know so. I, I try to just keep it at the at the hotel. And so then it's just, it's okay, I guess it depends on the filter, but still, yeah, you're right. Yeah, filtering water does save you money for sure. Oh, a ton of money. So we'll yeah. get like the eight gallon one, and just it's like it's literally twenty three dollars on Amazon, and you bring it there, you set it in the fridge, and then you know everyone can drink water and everyone's happy, and you know it's it's big money saver. So I'll say, Damon, usually we like for lunch. Sometimes we don't even get like a like we don't go to a quick service or anything. Sometimes we'll just go and get like one of those snacks at like one of the, the well, one uh, of the, like yeah. But some I of them are big though. That. No, you can get some big stuff. I mean, like if you go get the Nutella waffle at Sleepy Hollow, that thing is huge and it's five bucks, and you know it's it's pretty. A filling. Nutella waffle is not lunch though. Tom. Oh no, I'm it's, sorry. I'm, tell, it's, I'm just saying like you <laughs> no, can, no, I know the, what you're no, saying, you but snack. it is not lunch instead <laughs> of sitting down and the, have you know what I mean. It, that's yeah, a matter the, of perspective. The, 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 yes, we like to snack. We like to My snack. kids need like meat, um, protein. <laughs> well, like, you can do so that I too. I got two teenage boys, you like, can, you know. You could do that too. There's, you know, like, uh, 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 what can I think of? Oh, there was there a was turkey a, leg or something. You could do that. There you but, go. Do a turkey leg. There, there was like, for a while, they had like really cool waffle fries that had like pork on them and the cheese. The corn dogs and, are good. Corn dogs? The, the, we yeah. have done the corn dogs, but that's not enough for them. I guess. Like, 
That, that's the thing. So Do for food, us, two corn dogs. <laughs> I, I might as well have a sit down at that point, right? Two corn dogs is expensive. <laughs> and full. Hey, it might just be thirty dollars at that point. <laughs> anything else? Um, you, anything else you want to mention about your trip before we? No, uh, move I, I, on here? I, I think that was it. Like I said, I mean, oh well, I'm going to try to again. I'm going to try to do something that I was talking to the guys about, and uh, I may do some uh, video, rec- excuse me, some audio recordings of where I am in the park that they will be able to use on the next episode and you know we can have the listeners try to guess where i am in the park when i recorded the audio that sounds like fun sounds like fun yeah i'm i'm looking forward to to what you get out of that (laughs) yeah (laughs) where am i it it could be very creative i mean there i guess it depends on how well people know the 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 sounds and the the music and stuff in the park right I mean, oh, and I, well, I'm going to give a description too, right? Yeah. I'll say, you know, kind of what's to my left, what's ahead of me, and what's to my right. So, I mean, but I'm going to try to make it a little vaguer than something that you can just pop a map up and find out. Like, we'll we'll see. I feel like we'll I'm see. going to be pretty good at this, but we'll see. We'll see. I know you're going to make it hard. So, oh, well, now <laughs> I am. It's all going to be about stuff around Space Mountain, and you're going to be all confused. You're going to be like, no. I've never seen that see, before in my life. See, no, because I'm used to uh, spending time oh, around that's true, Space spending Mountain. Spending time outside. That's right. Well, it, well, you know what? It might be in line. Okay, mm. then you would get me because I have. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, we end where we always end, with, which is on a rumor, and I think this one is particularly cool, but uh, you don't? Mm. Okay. Uh, Star Wars Land might use something called magic power, which is something uh, that Imagineering patented uh, recently, which it's basically, uh, it, it's they're calling it magic power. It's a wireless charging system that'll be able to recharge devices such as interactive Star Wars gadgets and even some of the autonomous story characters uh, that'll be in the parks and interacting with guests. Uh, so it's basically a long range wireless charging system, uh, which is pretty cool to, in my mind. Uh, and apparently what th- these would be housed underneath uh, the garbage can. So you wouldn't even notice that they were there. Um, and also appa- apparently there's a lot of different things they can do that with this technology, for example, um, interactive technology, you know, interactive gadgets like lightsabers, uh, things like that. Um, you know, also it's possible to, to, you know, with this technology, also charge your phone with it too, which would be pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I think this is really neat. I think it's a cool rumor if it does happen. Uh, there is a YouTube video out there about how the technology actually works. Um, but uh, I don't know. What do you guys think of it? I, I know some people would be like, well, what is that doing to my brain? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I don't know why, but I kind of do. What, like the worried about it being like affecting. Yeah, and your... I'm sure it's going to be pretty safe, right? Like, I yeah. mean, it's Disney after all. I, I just think that it's it's going to create. Man, it may create a fair amount of IT resource power that needs to be for this stuff. I don't know. That's where I kind of, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't wow me. I mean, it sounds great and I like it, but how about just put in batteries that last for a day? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we yeah, have that technology <laughs> these days. You know, that makes it a little bit pricier to have batteries that last for a day. And I think that's where I'm kind of having a, a little bit of an issue with it, right? My yeah, phone lasts for like four days. So why yeah. can't I just have a device that lasts for a day? It's a good question. And I, I don't know if it's as much for the interactive stuff as it is for like the droids and stuff like that. Cause I did wonder to myself, like, okay, how are these droids going to stay out there for a whole day? Or, you know, they, they're just going to have so many of them. They're going to be rotating in and out. But again, I feel I, that's what I feel like. Like, I mean, we're at, you know, we're at a good time of batteries. So yeah. Anyway, it's interesting to me. I think it's kind of cool. And I, I wonder what kind of applications they could use for it. Well, and, and I guess my thing with this is, you know, how is Trevor in a washing machine? Mm-hmm. Are you what? in a washing machine? <laughs> no, I'm giving, I'm giving you a hard time. Yeah, because I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear the hail outside. Yeah, it, it's coming and going. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to mute it, but uh, yeah. So yeah, there's a thunderstorm going by outside. If if any, if I get disconnected, I'm sorry. Maybe um, maybe Mike uh, Mike M is also experiencing it right now too. So um, he might have had it before me actually, because oh, okay, he usually comes you. from that way. Anyway. Um, anyway. So I, I guess my questions with this is, it, so it's a wireless charging system. Mm-hmm. Um, one, I can see that causing some kind of havoc with cell phones. So. I mean, it just depends on, you know, what the bands yeah. are, right? Like, I mean, microwaves don't cause any trouble with cell phones. True, anymore. but but I guess they're not broadcasting to a, a larger, like they're they're contained, right? It's not, I don't okay, know. Okay, so, so the other towers well you know for other phone companies don't interfere with your phone right like i mean i don't know if i i don't i don't know if it's that's going to be the case but 
Well, I guess I maybe, know, yeah, th- there's that. And then there's also, you know, this this is an electrical field. What happens if somebody accidentally... Pacemakers? Like, that's you know, the grounds thing themselves, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't I, know about the, the grounding, but like, I wonder if it's going to be like where there's a pacemaker issue. I, I think it's going to be such low level, which here's the thing. That takes me back to my thing. If you're talking about such a low level charge, why not just make bigger batteries? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. An- Anchor probably wants to to um, you know team up with you guys. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Anyone from sponsor. Anchor? You know. <laughs> w- w- would it be weird if the the droid going around the park stopped in front of the uh, the fuel rod dispenser? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Just plugged in for a few. <laughs> grabbed a new one and then kept going. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's interesting. I think it could be cool if it's something. It's just another neat thing that they could be adding to this. And who knows what applications it really has, right? Oh, well, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. we don't really know. Yeah. So until we find out about that. But again, I'm always, Disney always does a good job at keeping everyone safe. So I'm not too worried about that. Well, yeah, th- I agree. And uh, I, they won't do anything that's not going to be safe for the guests. So um, so do you guys, guys want to wrap this thing up? I think we talked, we're, we're over mm-hmm. our normal amount today. We're, we're, we're actually talking a long time today. Oh, before we do this, not to end on a super sad note, but I did want to mention uh, those of you out there, I, I don't know if you saw, if you guys saw that uh, Richard, yeah. the, yep. um, so uh, a lot of Disney fans out there know Richard uh, was the uh, greeter uh, at, at uh, Grand Floridian and he had been at the resort, I think for 30 years long time he had the blue he had the blue pin which you know is like the highest basically the highest honor you can get from disney and uh he passed away i believe at 92 years old uh so that's that's kind of sad and uh you know really really uh, really sad about that my wife actually met him on our last trip when she went to the spa and was trying to find uh she was trying to find the spot at the grand floridian and uh he he was nice enough to escort her over there so really sad uh that that uh richard uh, passed away so i agree yeah it, it's it's uh, it's a very sad thing and, and I'm sure they'll do something to memorialize him but I also hope that they do pay attention to what he did bring to the place because you know I, I've read a lot of people's stories over the last couple of days mm-hmm. that, like you know the posted memories and everything and, and you know the, what he did is, is really that, that Disney magic that we want to see and I, and I really hope that Disney realizes Absolutely. that right yep yeah, it was special. It was even even John memories. Stamos posted a picture with him. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's that guy that's touched a lot something. of people. Yeah, so. yep. yeah, agreed. So. Very sad. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. You David. got it. Yeah, of course. Um, email us at welcomehomepodcast at gmail dot com. Like I said, we appreciate all the questions that got sent in. It actually makes it fun for us to know that people are listening, and and like Tom had mentioned, that we can help people. Not that we always have the best advice, but you know what? We usually have three distinct opinions, which is always good. We try Um, our hardest. (laughs) We try our hardest because we're all at different, you know, we all have different things going on. So again, email us, let us know, especially as follow-ups, Mike and Mike, if you know, you gleaned any information from us and, uh, you know, or have follow-up questions, by all means, let us know. Again, if there's any other questions from any of our other listeners, please just shoot them over to us and email I will probably not be posting on social media during my trip. That's why I'm kind of going to do these uh, sort of audio fun things. We'll see how they work out. And maybe I'll actually even share one of those River Country pictures that I had on one of the accounts. But if you would like to follow us on Facebook at Welcome Home Podcast, on Twitter at Welcome Home Pod, and on Instagram at Welcome Home Picks. As always, please give us some reviews everywhere you can. And please actually like the Facebook page. You know, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. Actually, for us, the best thing is to like us and follow us on Facebook. That would be the most helpful. And we are over 500 likes now. Woo! I thought Tom was supposed to buy somebody a t-shirt. But... I thought that was at like <laughs> 5,000 or 500,000. Oh, was it 5,000? Didn't okay, you say so... five? You said like 500,000, which was like a ridiculous amount. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy all the listeners t-shirts if we get to 500,000. So work on that. Ooh, careful. Whoa, dude, don't be like, what's <laughs> his name them. just did? What, who who was them. that, the, the football player that just did that, that said he would buy a, a jersey for everyone if um, <laughs> the Cavs won? And it was like they figured it out and it was like $18 million. Oh, my gosh. Now, we are reneging oh. on that. That is a Tom thing to say. What I will say is is that if we get to 5,000 likes, we will buy two people t-shirts from the parks. Done. You can mark that one down. Done. Yeah. I'm with you. 
Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you know, just search for us on Welcome Home. Uh, you know, that way every time uh, you can be reminded of a new episode when we have one come out. Um, you can find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, TuneIn, Stitcher, just about any podcast app that's available out there. You can find Welcome Home just by searching for Welcome Home. Uh, and just a reminder to our listeners, as always, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company, and as such, anything we say on the show is our own opinion. So please consult with a Disney representative or a DVC representative for more information about anything we said today. Uh, Damon, do you have anything you want to promote? Uh, no, not this week. All right, great. Well, uh, join us next time for more Disney Parks discussion and, uh, you know, of course, more DVC talk. We hope to see you all real soon. This is Skipper Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. We do a hug when we hit a chair. How she can cuddle is no man's affair. I looked around from pole to pole, found her in a sugar bowl. Look out, here comes my...